Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to start a new series on the channel which I call the RE Framework video series. When I say RE Framework, I mean the Robotics Enterprise Framework. Now why are we starting this series? I have been getting multiple comments and multiple requests from the channel viewers that I should start something on the Robotics Enterprise Framework. So I thought when we are going to uh, cover the robotics enterprise framework we should do it in a proper way we should start from the scratch understanding each and every component what is the framework what are state machine how they are built and then we gradually step towards building of the use cases and uh, completing the entire video series having said that what exactly are we going to cover in the video series first video would be the introduction to the re framework which is this video Next, we are going to explore each and every stage in the RE framework. Post that, we are going to explore the use case which we would be building in the dispatcher and the performer model. As of now, if you don't understand what is dispatcher, what is performer, just watch the video one which is this video till end and you would have the complete understanding of dispatcher and the performer. Post that, whatever use case we explore, we will try to build the same use case in Robotics Enterprise Framework with a step-by-step -step demonstration. So all of the videos which are highlighted in the grey are the upcoming videos in the series. So stay tuned for that. This is the first video as I told which is introduction to RE Framework. So what exactly are we going to cover in the RE Framework which is this video. Today I would be discussing about what is a transaction. What are the different kind of transactions we can have? What is the difference between a linear, iterative and transactional? Where exactly a transactional processing is required? Post that why there is always a need of framework? What is RE framework? What are the benefits of state machines? What are the different state machines? Why exactly RE framework is required? What are the features? what is dispatcher, what is performer and at the end we will also see that what are the advantages we get while we use the dispatcher and the performer. So this is the agenda for this video. Once this video is completed, the next video will be the continuation of this video where we would be exploring the other set of stage. Okay, so let's get started. So today we are going to start Robotics Enterprise Framework and what is that, how it is working, we are going to start right from the scratch, okay. So first of all, before directly jumping into the juicy stuff of the Robotics Enterprise Framework, I just wanted to tell what exactly is the transaction. So a transaction represents a minimum smallest amount of data necessary to fulfill a business process. So for example, if I have to do a business process and there is the smallest thing, which is the bare minimum to do that thing is called a transaction. For example, reading a single email from the mailbox and extract the data from it. That is, so for example, if I am writing a process where I have to extract the data from uh, email and uh, read the data from a mailbox and extract the data from it, I will call that thing as a transaction. Now the transactions are always atomic. That means the assumption is once you have read and extracted the data, you know require, uh, you don't no longer require that thing. So that is what it is called a transaction, a single atomic thing that is able to run the, uh, fulfill the business requirement that is called a transaction, okay. Now, when you come to the transaction, there are three types of transactions which are available. The three kinds of transaction would be linear, iterative and transactional. So we are going to see what exactly are the three. So RE framework falls in the third category, which is called the transactional. But during your automations, you will always have a requirement to work in a linear process, an iterative process and a transactional process. So you might have a requirement to change the RE frameworks. That is why it is important to understand the difference between the three. Now. A linear transaction would be a simple thing that if I put it like this, the steps of the process are performed only once. 
and the automation need not to be executed again. So for example, I have a email, the email arrives, the automation process and the job done. If I have to again execute the same thing, I would have to again rerun the process from the orchestrator. So if I have just one email arriving, I get the extract the data job done. That means that if I have to run it for the different data, I would have to rerun the process. So that is what is called a linear transaction. So in the right side, if you will see in the linear transaction, what happens? You initialize the data, you get the data, you process the data and the transaction ends. That means if you have to rerun the entire thing with for a new transaction or for a new item, you would have to rerun the process from the orchestrator. So that is what we call as a linear transaction where you just do the step or the processing only once. If the same step is required again, you have to run the automation again. Next is something which is called the iterative transaction. Okay. Iterative transactions means that the steps of the process are performed multiple times, but each time with a different data set. Now in the previous one, you would have seen, we have got the data, we initialized, we get the data, we process the data and the process was end. Now in the iterative process, what happens? You initialize, you get the data at once. So for example, now instead of one email, you would have to read 10 emails. Okay. Now in 10 emails, what would happen is you initialize, you get the data means you read all the 10 emails together and then you process 10 emails one by one by one and then you end the process. That means now the disadvantage of the iterative process is let's say there are 15 emails and you are processing the emails and you got an exception in the fifth email, all the others transaction would not happen and it will fail 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 all the transaction. So that is the iterative one. I'll repeat. We have three kinds of transaction, linear transaction, iterative transaction and transactional. Linear means you execute the entire process only once, initialize, get the data, process the data and the transaction. In the iterative process, the steps will happen reoccurring but only the thing which will change is process data. That means you will initialize, you will get the data, everything at once. For example, you have an Excel which is having 100 rows. So you will read all the 100 rows at once. Then you will try to process the 100 rows one by one. But the drawback or the disadvantage of the iterative process is that if any of the exception, uh, any of the transaction fails, it would impact the entire automation, right? So that is iterative. The third one is called the transactional process, which where RE frameworks come in picture. In the transactional process, what will happen similarly to the iterative process, it will start. But now instead of getting all the data at once, it will get the data one by one. Okay. It will not read all the email at once and then process rather it will go and take one email one by one and after it get one email, it will process that email. Get the email number two, process email number two. Get email number three, process email number three. So that way you are reducing the dependencies on the each and every transaction. So here, let's say email number five fails. It has no impact on the six, seven and eight. So that is the difference between an iterative and a trans uh, transactional transaction. So our RE framework is built on the concept of transactional, but on your requirement basis, you might need to change the RE framework to sometime linear, sometime to iterative. That is why it is important to understand the difference between the three. Okay, so let me move forward. Now, when I say transactional process, what would be an example? So I will give you three example. For example, you have to read invoices that are available in a folder and you have to create an automation where you have to read the invoices. So that means your each invoice is now a transaction. This is repetitive. You have to extract the data and put it in some place, but here rather reading all the inputs, all the uh, files from the folder at once, I would be reading one by one. That means my each invoice is now a transaction. And if my any of the invoice fails, I won't impact the other. The next is, for example, you have a list of email addresses in uh, Excel 
and you have to send an email to the person row here each row in the spreadsheet will be a transaction now the last example which is given when you are looking for a new apartment a robot is used to make search according to the criteria and the robot extract some of the details of the property and put it in a let's say excel sheet now in this case the details of the property will be a transaction so everything which is having the same kind of thing which you are going to do is called a transaction now on your automation you first thing you have to decide whether you are going to make a rep, uh, repetitive process iterative process linear process and when you say i am going to build a transactional process so it is important to describe what would be the transaction for you okay so this was an example of transactional processing now i have told that re framework uses transactional process and we should use re framework now you might ask me a question that why do i require a framework so these are some of the things which are available in the academy course i have dotted it from there only that framework is just a template it is a predefined template that you create and you can just plug and play your automation the framework has mechanism to store read easily modify the project configuration data exception handling is already done in the re framework event logging is done and all the relevant transaction information is already loaded so that is why we can use a framework that means if there are 10 developers i don't have to teach the 10 developer the same thing rather i create a simple framework i tell all the developers to follow the framework and now everybody can use the same framework now based on these two concept of transactional processing and the framework we have something in ui path which we call the re framework or the robotics enterprise framework now robotics enterprise framework is totally built on the concept of state machines so in the beginning of the chapter we have told right what exactly is the state machine how that thing is working so i am not going to repeat the state machine chapter but uh, just to uh, reiterate re framework is entirely built on the concept of state machines now when i say state machines why exactly state machine right i could have chosen a flow chart also but what are the benefits which i get by using a state machine it is flexible i can add or remove states my business logic is separate from my system logic i can have self transition i can have n number of final states so these are some of the benefits which i get by using the state machine these benefits are not available when i build the automation with the flow chart so that is why it is important to understand the state machine first then if you understand the state machines concept clearly re framework would be very easy for you so to start with re framework we understand state machine and we understand the transactional processing now this is from my previous video which you would have seen that what exactly is a state machine so when we talk about state machine ui path has two activity one is called a state and one is called a final state so in ui path everything is a state so let me show you by an example so this is my ui path studio and this is nothing but a robotics enterprise framework so if you will notice all of these our state right so re framework is built on the concept of state so if you go to the activity and you search here state you will see only two activity state and a final state so state machine is this block so the container to hold the state machines this is the container if you go to the properties you can see this is the state machine now all of this initialization trans get transaction process transaction these are all the states right now if i just open any of the xaml let's say let me open the initialization you would see that there are three sections one is entry one is exit and then there is something called the transition so this applies to all of the state machines so it is important to understand the execution right so the first the entry of the state machine will executed next the re framework or ui path will check where exactly the flow has to go if there is a transition and that is confirmed then while the bot is exiting the state machine in the third place it will go and execute the exit block the execution is not 1 2 3 it is 1 3 2 
that means first the entry of the execution state machine will execute next the transition and next the exit so if i go back to our robotics enterprise framework what happens when the initialization will happen first this block will execute next it will check where i have to go i have to go to get transaction or i have to go to end process so let's say i say that you have to go to end process so when it is going to end process at that moment the activities which are written in the exit block will execute okay so this is important to understand that first then second and then third so this is the execution of the state machines and the same applies to the re framework as well now there is one more activity which is called the final state that has only one uh, block or uh, which is called the entry block now this uh, video uh, i have a detailed video on my channel which is explaining all about the state machines so you can refer this video where i am talking each and every bit of state machine so whenever you are confused just read about state machine and that will give you an idea and then we go to the state machines and then we go to the re framework sorry now this is how a typical re framework looks like so the first question or many times interviewer will ask you how many states are available in re framework so re framework has four states right i have seen here it has uh, initialization get transaction and process and the process transaction and how do i create an re framework you always go to home you have something from the template which is called the robotics enterprise framework as soon as i click on this now you will see it says create a transactional business process so now i hope you understand what is transactional so i click on this guy and this opens a framework for me which is called the robotics enterprise framework it has four states that means it is built on four state machines the name of the states are initialization get transaction and process and process transaction now as a developer or any whenever you are working for any business you will come across situation you where you might need to add or remove states to the state machine so for example today your client says you are having some requirement where you want to let's say execute the process transaction or uh, let's say you want i will tell you how easy it is to customize let's say i have a requirement where whenever i say that whenever there is a process transaction and there is an exception handling i want to go to the end process so i simply go and join this to here that is it right so this is how easy it is to manipulate the re framework right but most of the times the default one will work but as a developer you might face situations where you might need to change the uh, re framework okay so base thing only four state initialization get transaction process and end state okay now these are the four states now i am going to explain each and every bit in detail but this is just a very very high level that what happens in the init state in the init state it will read all the configuration files okay so if you will see this state machine it is pretty easy to understand at this level right we start the process we go to initialization in the initialization we collate all the things which are required to run the automation that includes the configuration file the opening of the application you can just think of this block that whatever i need to do in the automation whatever i require the things in the automation i will open those thing i will read the configuration everything happens here now let's say while reading this or opening the application you encounter some kind of exception so that means it will go and it will end the process it will say that i am not able to initialize the thing what i will do and by uh, running the process so it will come and end the process now let's say the initialization was successful that means you were successfully able to read the data get the configuration file next what it will do is it will go and get the transaction data so now just go by the word transaction that means it is going to somewhere and get the transaction now that transaction can be a queue item it can be an email it can be a file from a folder it can be a data row so anything can be a transaction now it will go and get the transaction now let's say if there is a new transaction which is available it will process that transaction now when i am processing the transaction there are certain things which might happen either the transaction will be successful 
or either there will be a business exception or there would be a, a, a system exception so how re framework is designed if the transaction is successful it will go and get back a new transaction see the success get the new transaction if there is a business exception that means the it has failed some business check it will go and get the new exception but let's say while executing the transaction it has got some system exception the application you are interacting was not available it has not opened so what re framework will do it will go it again to the initialization it will start all the applications again and then it will try the same transaction and let's say when all the transaction are finished that means no data it will go and end the process so this is at a very high level how re framework was in it it is the place where process start it is an operation that will initialize the setting read the config everything in the get transaction you get the transaction item now that can be a queue as i was telling in the previously that it can be a queue it can be a file in a folder anything so get transaction data it will get the transaction now in the process transaction this is the place where the actual logic or the actual brain of the automation will happen that what you have to do with this transaction let's say five items so all of these five items i want to enter into the sap so the enter into the sap part will be the process transaction and the end transaction is basically where you close all the application and you exit the system so only four stages okay now what are the features of re framework so this is again a question that you might get in interviews that you have used re framework but what are the benefits that you are getting right so first benefits is setting and the configuration that means it has a config file where you can store the settings and the configuration values settings and the configurations when i say in future if you need to change anything you don't have to come and change the code you can drive that configuration with the help of an configuration file so at uh, the first benefit which is available is the setting and configuration all the urls of the application the queues name the logging messages everything is configurable in re framework you can even configure the delays the exception screenshot path and all of the things whatever you think might change in future is configurable in re framework how it is configurable there is a file which is called config.xlsx this offers you to uh maintain that configuration file now why exactly i have to maintain a config file so for example when i am changing my uh, deploying my robot from the development to the test to the production environment all i have to do is just change the value in the config file for example in the development you might be sending the success email to your developer now when you go to the test you would be sending the email the success email to the tester but when you go to the production you will not use the developer and the tester mail id you will use the business email id so you don't want to go and change the send outlook mail message activity right rather you will go to the config file update the email addresses there so that is the benefit first benefit is setting and configuration second benefit is logging so that is again one more powerful feature which is provided by re framework which is called the built in logging functions that means that simply means that whenever you go to any of the processes like this so re framework has done the set of logging for us so whenever you pass let's say whenever you are using the init all application right so you just have to go and read write the code here you see it has already added this log message that i am opening the application that means when your process is running in an unattended mode re framework will set send the logs to the orchestrator and by looking at the orchestrator you can say that okay my process went till here my process was fine till here so logging is already done in the re framework now as a developer you always require to add more logs now that logs can be a custom logs you can add more orchestrator logs whatever you feel like but the logs would be required whenever you are facing any issue in the production and you want to debug so that is where the logs will come in picture now as an example what they have given let's say how many invoices are processed each day so if today i ask you that uh, you are processing your robot was processing 100 uh, invoices and out of those 100 invoices some of the invoices got failed 
now somebody ask you tell me why those invoices has failed so now that is the moment where you go to the logs and see what has went wrong so this logging mechanism is provided by ui path the other best part is business and the application exception so re framework has catered the business and the application exception separately and it has implemented the necessarily retry mechanism as well for example let's say uh you were using a web application and uh, you were downloading some data from the browser and the browser freezes right it has become not not responding now you have used a click activity now if i use a click activity and i click on the frozen application it will say that i am not able to click and it will give an exception now such kind of exceptions are already handled in re framework to enable the recovery so that is where it might happen that if i simply close the browser and reopen the browser it might work so this kind of application uh, this kind of exceptions are already built in re framework you just have to utilize them so re framework take care of such kind of application by retrying the thing right and where that is done so let's say i would again show you to how that is done so i was processing a transaction i got a system exception so re framework is coded like it will go it will go check here okay if it is a system exception it will go and again reopen and reinitializes everything so that ensures that my transaction is not failed and it will only attempt the several number of times which you have coded so let's say i have uh, instructed re framework that you need to only retry three times so it will only retry three times now the other thing is there is something which is called the business exception so business has given you a credential a user id and the password to log in now your bot is trying to log in and while it is trying to log in it says that i am not able to log in to this application so that is a business exception because business gave you that credential now in those scenarios it does not make sense to retry the application right so that is why because if the password is wrong once it will always be wrong so that is why let's say you are processing a transaction and you encounter a business exception this arrow now it will go and get the next transaction so that is how re framework is built and most of the requirements are catered here right so re framework differentiate between application business so application is sometime also called a systems exception also so these are the benefits which whenever ask you what are the benefits settings logging business exception so this was about re framework now re framework has also a concept of dispatcher and performer dispatcher and performer you can just treat it as somebody call it dispatcher performer consumer or customer bot anything so people will call it by different names so the idea and the concept is same somebody call it producer consumer bot like that different terminology but the entire concept is same so dispatcher and performer these will be the two separate robots sometime it can be one so dispatcher would be a robot that will add the transaction to the queues right when i say queues it can be anything to a data table or anything now if i ask you that you have to run a process and you have to process 150 emails so the next question you will ask me where would i go get those 150 emails so i say that 150 emails will be available in the orchestrator queue right but there should be one robot which will add the data to the queue so that adding of data to the queue is called the dispatcher that means it will be dispatching the items to the queue and then there would be a performer whose job will be just to retrieve the data from the queue and process them one by one so in entire uh, whenever you build a transactional pick process you would have two processes two robotics enterprise framework one framework for dispatcher and one framework for uh, performer so dispatcher simply means getting the data adding it to the queue and the performer is retrieving the data and uh, just uh, using and processing it one by one so that is the difference between a dispatcher and a performer so this is how the dispatcher will look like so it will get all the data from a data source right so now the data source may be a website for example if you have to write an automation to 
get hundred one thousand data scrape data from a website and then you have to enter that data to a website to some other data sources right so what you will do is you will write a dispatcher in the dispatcher you will get all the data then you will have queues item now this is a question which is again asked in interviews that can you use one dispatcher to add data to multiple queues the answer is yes because if you can see i can get the data from one sources so let's say i have 50000 transactions and i want to i want them to process in separate separate queues okay so that means i will use the dispatcher here in the dispatcher i will simply get all the data i will dispatch everything to the uh, queue item separate separate queue or one queues and then it will process now similarly dispatcher what are the benefits and what is dispatcher that is written on the left side i'll simply read that the dispatcher is a process used to push the transaction items right if you notice it says transaction items to the queue it extract the data one by one or multiple sources and then it creates an item so whatever data the dispatcher will be dispatching it will go to the queue or to some kind of data set information are pushed to one or more queues so this is important information are pushed one or more queues allowing the dispatcher use a common format in the queue items row the answer is you can use the dispatcher to add data queue data to one or more than one queues now why we are doing this uh, because we can always split the processing between multiple robots so let's say that i have 10 robots so i can give the 10 robots the 10 queues and then the robots will work only on the dedicated queue so that is dispatcher now the next uh, counterpart of the dispatcher is called the performer right so here if you will see in the data sources we got a dispatcher and we, we add items to the queue now in the performer what will happen the performer will be running on only one queue okay one performer or by default is uh, designated to work only in one queue so that means here if i see q1 q2 q3 that means here i will have one performer that will get the item one by one the performer is a process used to pull the transaction okay and then q items are processed one at a time you cannot process two items at once right it will be processed one by one so why it is processing one by one because it is a transaction and we do not want our transaction to uh, get impacted so for example if tomorrow q item number 3 fails it would be separate from q item number 4 so only this item will fail and this would get successful that is why it process one item at a time the performer uses the error handling and the retry mechanism that is again inbuilt in ari framework a major advantage of the performer is the scalability that means multiple performers can be used with a single queue this is one queue and this i have made one performer when i say performer this is nothing but a robot right now let's say you have a queue and that queue is having 5 lakhs rows now if you have only one robot and that is performing uh, one item one by one by one it will take time right rather i would do is i will add 10 robots and i will say all the 10 robots you clear the item from this queue so it is working both the ways in the dispatcher you can add multiple items to the queues in the performer from one queue you can have multiple robots or multiple queue multiple robots so that is the differentiate and the benefit which we get by using the dispatcher and the performer approach now these are the advantages which i have written better separation between the dispatcher and the performers that means it includes the uh, architecture and the process layer are different there is better exception handling mechanism there is possibility to run the uh, processes across multiple machines so if you have 10 machines you have 10 robots you can run the same process 10 times so if anyone ask you how do you run the robot multiple times you just say that we use the dispatcher performer approach the better reusability now it has used the built in configuration and the thing is previously workflow created with ari framework can be easily adapted 
so let's say if there is one developer who has worked on some performer dispatcher you can easily plug and play that performer dispatcher in your thing okay so that was all for this video which was introduction to re framework i hope you are now able to understand the basic concepts of re framework what is a transaction what is dispatcher what is performer what are the benefits of this stay tuned for the video series in the upcoming videos we would be exploring all the other topics so thank you for watching if you like this video please do subscribe to the channel and happy automation Thank you.